Okay, here we're working on a ZF 5HB 19FL. Now, what is this out of? This is out of a 2006 Volkswagen Passat with a 1.8 liter turbocharged gasoline engine. Now, what ZF was using with the 5HP transmission, they like to use these little orifice check valves. And if you note the different colors, each color, can't really say that because there's a very small orifice and there's a much larger orifice, but normally the color is to kind of help you identify it and its corresponding location. Now, I've had several of these transmissions apart before, and I knew that there was going to be this series of colored discs, so I was very painstakingly laying them out correctly, just as I removed them from the valve body. Now, it's easy to get these mixed up, and if you did, you're going to change the behavior of the transmission. Or if you were to leave one out or actually put it somewhere it doesn't belong, so you can see the disaster that it could actually ensue. Now, I'm going through this valve body carefully, cleaning it. This had a torque converter failure that produced tremendous amounts of metal. And there was a very fine paste of, of course, uh, uh, ground steel and aluminum there throughout the transmission. And, of course, the uh, cleaning up the valve body is going to be one of our operations. Now, we're going to go ahead and, you know, clean the filters on all the solenoids and... Uh, Hopefully they'll be able to rescue those. We may be buying a set of solenoids and getting a set of the um, pressure control, shift control solenoids for a ZF transmission that's usually very common. But here we're taking a look at this layout. Now let's just look at it for a moment. And uh, here we see these white discs. And they look identical right there with a same size orifice. There we see our check ball and the witness mark. Here we see one of our check valves. This is just simply a filter. And as we come across, I see white, 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 white. There's the two check balls. I see a blue and then purple. And as I look at the different purple check valves, they appear to have the same size orifice. Here we see a blue. There we see a white. There we see a gray. Now, as I look across here, we want to look very carefully. I notice to see white and white, they look the same, but as I look at these different brown ones, obviously very different size orifice. There's the green, and of course here we see our two different relief valves. They have different spring tensions. You want to be careful not to get those mixed up. Okay, now here is an interesting one. This does not have a hole in it. It's just simply a check valve. Instead of a ball, they actually have a disc. So, let's go ahead and take a look. White, there's the check ball. White, white, white. There we come. There's the check disc with the orifice. And, of course, I see my check ball. We see the purple, the blue. There's a check valve. Yellow, gray, purple. Now here it looks like there could have been actually two, but there was very clearly no witness mark on the valve body separator plate. And you can see the clear witness mark. This is about 2006, so we're looking about 14, 15, 16 years of operation. So that, that little valve went up against that plate many, many times. And here we see purple, there we see purple. Here we see, now this actually looks kind of like a yellowish color. It's definitely not white. If I compare it with the white, it's certainly yellow. There we see the brown, but here we see browns with much larger orifices. There we see the green, and then we see the white and the black with a different style spring. And then this was all by itself down here. It has a spring that may be similar to this, but they, we don't want to mix them up. All right, now, and here I see a check ball up in the corner. Now, I painstakingly have taken pictures of this with my iPhone. As you can see, we're making a video right now. And I do get a new gasket there in my kit. And uh, one of the things that I was doing, which is something that uh, can kind of help 
identify where these actually go. Of course, you want to be careful as you take this apart, as there's a clear witness mark on the plate. Every place there was a check valve. And you'll see what I mean when I say witness mark. After 16, 17 years of operation, there we see is indeed leaves its signature there on the plate. Now, you'll notice that this check ball, it rolled back and forth enough to make a very small line. But as we look at this one, this line is much, much thicker. So obviously, in the, during the operation of the transmission, this check ball moved probably considerably more than this one did. Okay, now here we see the three pulsation dampeners. So what am I talking about pulsation dampeners? Here's an old one, and this one looks like it's in pretty good shape. But what happens, you'll notice that on some models of the, like, 6HP or 8HP, it just flattens that rubber pulsation dampener right out. And sometimes when they give you the kit, the only thing they're giving you is this rubber section here in the center. That's all they give you. Well, that's all you need, actually, because this is made out of uh, a type of, it looks like aluminum, anodized aluminum. Now we're going to go through the valve body, of course, carefully and check all the, uh, all the, all the valves. Some of them, you know, uh, you can go ahead and remove the valves from the valve body, you know, cleaning it very carefully to make sure they're all free. But here we see the channel plate. Now one thing about this channel plate on the 5HP, this actually is going to face downward. And as a result, okay, here we see the channel plate. Now, actually, it, when installed in the transmission, it actually faces up, so it's not super prone to picking up metal. But still, there can be a lot of material collected in it. Now, obviously, on the um, CF automatic transmissions, they do have a fibrous style filter. It will catch large debris. And that filter will help save the transmission. Obviously, if the transmission catastrophically fails, the filter can also become blocked and you know, prevent the vehicle from even moving or it goes into limp-in. Saving the transmission, actually, making it possible to rebuild it. But here we see the location of those little check disks. Now, when you're putting this together, it's easy for the check disk to go sideways. And if it goes sideways, there in the channel, of course, it won't be functional. So you want to pay real close attention as you're putting this together. And here we see a location of a check ball. And uh, here we see another check ball. And here we had a check ball all by itself up in this corner. So there we go. We cleaned it very thoroughly. I uh, use a safety clean um, least solvent tanks. And uh, we actually made a video about those before. I have two of them. Actually, I primarily just use one. And I have used the northern filter bags to actually clean up my solvent when it becomes dirty. But they come and change it for me every 90 days. And then the second one, I use it to draw solvent from. Because in the operations of cleaning the transmissions, I have a tendency to lose it, obviously, from uh, evaporation. Now, um... I use the 105 solvent. It's the more volatile solvent. It dries pretty well. Uh, when it's fresh, it dries very quickly. Uh, after you contaminate it with transmission fluid, of course, obviously, the residue of the transmission fluid remains. So it's not quite as, uh, as good. But then, of course, uh, after 90 days, the Safety Clean Man comes and changes both my solvent tanks. All right, so we've cleaned this up very carefully. We're going to check all the valves and the valve body sections very thoroughly. And then here we see one of the valve body sections. And uh, here we see the uh, system pressure regulator valve. Now, if you're going to insert any type of tool in here to check a valve, you probably want to use a plastic or wood, and that, that's what I do. And if, if necessary, especially on a valve body where it's a suspect, I actually will completely disassemble the valve body and actually remove each valve. And we may be doing that here with this one. Here we see one of our valve body sections. 
Okay, here we see another one of the valve body sections, and here we have a series of uh, pressure control and shift valves. And oftentimes these can fail with ZF, and of course they just carefully label them. But uh, we actually buy a kit, and a kit is from ZF and includes all of the solenoid valves. So we'll see these, and of course here the one that's on the auxiliary body right there. And that will all come as a set. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, finish cleaning this up and get ready to... Uh, uh, I'm going to actually remove and clean the filters on every single one of these solenoids, just visually inspect them, and then go ahead and reassemble the unit.